So there are a lot of misconceptions with HTMX, especially on Twitter, to be honest, on the internet. A lot of Timmies are worried. A lot of Timmies cannot sleep at night because they have two uh, misconceptions, right? They say, hey, listen, HTMX is only for to-do lists. If you think it is, then you're wrong. Then you basically are not subscribed to my channel. And guys, uh, before we continue here with this video, if you're not subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing because I promised my grandma to have 100k subscribers by the end of the year. So don't let grandma down and subscribe to my channel. You would do her an enormous favor, right? Of course, also jump into my Discord community. And for the people that really want to level up and really want to know how to write Golang or even how to write non-to-do lists with HTMX and Golang, check out the course in the link below right so uh, they have two misconceptions they think htmx is only good for to-do lists completely not true i'm gonna prove it and the second thing is they are so worried about the xss <coughs> the xss attacks uh, so what is an xx xss attack i cannot even pronounce the word it's a cross-site scripting attack uh, which is an attack that injects malicious executable scripts into the code executable scripts i don't even know how that's going to be with htmx what are you doing i have no fucking clue um into the code of a trusted application or website right attackers often initiate an xss attack by sending a malicious link to a user and and decising and tissing the user to click it um yeah that's basically it uh the thing is that how are you gonna get that done with htmx then you're doing it completely wrong right so let's first take a look at uh where is this thing here so we have Levenue, right what is Levenue? Levenue is my company 40 million dollar company and what it basically does check out the the Levenue website if you want to know more and uh we have uh, a complete application here uh that is built with golang temple and htmx right it's in production it's getting used by a lot of people uh this is basically a, a demo environment so don't worry about this right uh, so it's not a to-do list. You can do a lot more stuff and we are using HTMX for a lot of stuff in here, right? Uh, there are videos uh, about this on my YouTube channel. The same thing we have with FanMade, to be honest, FanMade.ai, uh, which is an application that I made. Um, let's click this thing here. So this all works with HTMX and Golang. You know what I mean? Uh, generate images. Can I click this? Uh, maybe we can. So you can do all that stuff. Uh, it's all with HTMX and Golang. Is it a do up? No, it isn't. You probably cannot create this with React because you're still a Timmy. Um, anyway, so that's out of the way. The next thing is basically, I think people are a little bit confused with HTMX and they are using it completely wrong. So let's get let's get this done. So basically, if we we need to go back in the beginning, right? We need to go back to the origins. Uh, of programming probably you were not born at that time but i'm going to explain you so you know so basically we have this index.html file and let's say we're going to have a div here right uh we're going to make an id and this is going to be for example uh, i'm going to do pseudocode right very important for the people on reddit very important for the other timmies that are going to comment that the code is wrong this is going to be pseudocode and there could be some syntactical problems here but that's not the point right the point is the the high level of this, the high level concept of this. So we're going to have a, a user list in our diff, right? Something like that. Okay. So um, let's make a button, right? Because we're going to click a button and it's going to load user information. Uh, actually, to be honest, user details. Let's make user details here. User details. Or actually, yeah, it's fine. Now we're going to make a button here. Uh, we're going to give this button an ID of uh, BTN, right? BTN, just like that. So now we need to have some JavaScript. Back in the day, if you want to click this button and you want to load information from your backend into this user detail diff, we need to have some JavaScript. So back in the day, we have we had a script tag or something like that, or jQuery, whatever, uh, or or maybe you have another file. There are a lot of ways to do that, and you need to do something like this, right? You do something like this is pseudo code. It's going to be wrong, right? But it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to guess it. So we're going to say BTN. I think it's click. Uh, click thingy, we're gonna make this callback in here, boom, 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 just like that, right? If we click this thing, then we're gonna say, uh, then we're gonna say, I think it's gonna be something like this, jQuery, wait, jQuery gets, right, slash user one, for example, then, I don't know how this works, something like this, back in the day, await, didn't, didn't exist, guys, right? I, I wait, nobody knows what it is, because it was not invented yet. 
uh, just like that get and then we're gonna do wait this is gonna be the usage data right data or something I don't know and then we're gonna say uh, jQuery and we're gonna get this uh, user detail uh, details thingy dot HTML I think it is or in it actually is it HTML or in it HTML I'm not quite sure uh, and then we're gonna do something with data right this is not going to do exactly what we need but the pseudo code of that is gonna be something like that right <clears throat> Click the button, do a do an, uh, get call, uh, and, and with the data we receive, we're going to put that into our HTML diff tag, which is this thing. Something like that, right? Of course, you need to do something more here, but it doesn't really matter, right? You get the point, you know what I mean? And if you don't get it, it's time to go back to the McDonald's job, right? That's how it works back in the day. The same thing goes for now. If you have React or something, you need to have React installed and you need to have all these Node modules and all that stuff. The main, the main thing is you're going to have two files, right? You're going to have your HTML and you're going to have some JavaScript thing. What does HTMX doing behind the scenes is exactly this, right? It makes sure that we don't need the script shenanigans. So how does it work with HTMX? Very simple. Uh, we're going to have this button, right? And we're going to have an hx get. In this case, we're going to say slash user. Wait, I'm doing it completely wrong. It's going to be hx get, something like that, slash user one, right? And then we're going to say hx target, right? We're going to say, yo, what? where do we want to swap? Which diff target ID, whatever, needs to be filled with the response. And that's going to be, of course, the user details right here. And then we're going to say, how do we want to swap it? Uh, hx star... Wait, it's like target. Uh, yeah, that's that. It's going to be HX swap, if I remember correctly. And that's going to be an inner HTML or another HTML, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Right? And this line of code, only this three attributes is going to replace all this bullshit, which is going to replace the code we needed to, rip, to write. It's going to replace the file we needed to create. It's going to replace all that stuff easy peasy isn't it so now people are confused but now you need to sanitize your data on the front end how do you need to sanitize your data xss this is unsafe help me why is this unsafe timmy explain to me because you're gonna even if you do a post right you could do a post you could do whatever you're always going to be sanitizing your data on the back end you never are going to trust user data on your backend, right? This guy here, this application on the front end, can post whatever it wants. Because on your backend, you're going to make sure that the data is going to be posted by a user, that it's untrusted, and you're going to sanitize it. You're going to, to validate it, you're going to, to do escape it, whatever you need to do with it, right? That's what you're going to do. Of course, I can... Imagine that with HTMX you could do some scripting shenanigans, but we don't. Why would you use that, right? You're not going to use these again. Why are you guys making things always so complicated? Even the most simple thing in the universe, which is HTMX, you are again or going to overcomplicate it. Why is that, guys? Well, I don't understand. What, which kind of school are you going to? Who are you subscribed to? Who is telling you to make everything so complicated? It's easy. There is no way there is going to be an XSS attack if you sanitize your data. Because this is the exact same thing like this. And back in the day, everything works like this. Over years and years and years. And what did, what did we do here? We never trusted code coming from the client. Never. Ever. And still of today, we don't trust it. So there is no problem at all. You know what I mean? And that's the only thing how, how we use HTMX, right? And of course, with an HX indicator and, and some other stuff and a load and whatever, there are some cool stuff you could do, but it's all the same. It's all doing get requests, post requests, delete requests to the backend. Um, and we need to be responsible and always need to sanitize the data that's coming from a user at all times, right? That's basically it, guys. There is no more, I cannot explain more than this. It's so fucking simple. Um, there is no need to be worried. It's all good. You can sleep on your two ears, guys. Trust me. Um, 
yeah, that's it, right? Like I said, you can do a lot of nasty stuff, but that's all waste. But don't do it, right? Just keep it simple and and embrace the simplicity. You know what I mean? Embrace the simplicity. You know, that's what you need to do. Because simple things and boring things, if you repeat that for a very long time, success is inevitable. Thanks for watching. And I see you in the next live stream or video. Bye-bye.